I have treated people who were evaluated and deemed untreatable. Sometimes because they have antisocial features, which many individuals with narcissistic pathology do have. They lie, they sometimes cheat, they bend the rules, even sort of soft antisocial features, they're bending the rules and so on and so forth. That in and of itself doesn't say to me that they can't be treated. And there's a reason for that, which I can get into. It's a structural reason. Um, the grandiosity inflates the ego. And so there aren't the normal checks and balances that we have in the personality from what we call the superego or the conscience, the part of ourselves that's like, you know, has ethical, moral uh, standards and so on. And so the individual often doesn't see reality, uh, doesn't see realistically what the consequences of their actions are. So I see the antisocial features as a consequence of the personality pathology. Once you start treating the personality pathology, the antisocial features usually abate, and the person can become more reflective about them as the grandiosity diminishes, they develop more capacity to reflect on the grandiosity, then they become much more aware of how they are bending the rules, how they are exploiting other people, um, even lying, and so on. So that's one reason people say that those with narcissistic pathology are not treatable, is the antisocial features. The other thing is the rigidity of the personality. It is true that individuals with narcissistic personality disorder particularly have a more rigid structure. That structure I'm gonna describe as the grandiose self. Our self is made up of realistic images of ourself, the ideal images of others, the parents, and the ideal images of the self. With those who have narcissistic pathology, the ideal elements overshadow the real self. So the real self remains almost like in a kind of deep storage. And the grandiosity that we see, the arrogance, the boastfulness for those who are overt, grandiose narcissists comes from that inflated, grandiose self. All negative aspects of the self tend to get projected onto the others. And so others are distrusted at the same time, they need to be controlled because they represent an aspect of the self. So you have this tension between the constant evacuation of everything negative and projecting that onto other people, but then having to stay, in a sense, close to those others because those others represent a devalued negative aspect of self. So that's one picture that can occur. But if you understand that structure, and if you're extremely patient, they're very treatable.